I guess we'll start off just there, you know, first off the reason we're here, being the longest serving president now, you know, this is the seventh president in the school's history, but when you realize that you were coming up to that moment, you look back at these, this decade, uh, first your thoughts on, on what, that, what that means to you and, and to the school. Well, you know, it's um, a decade is a time period in which you can measure impact and that's what really was so profound is the tremendous growth of the impact of UAB on our mission. And our mission is big. Education, research, health care, community service, and economic development. And to measure that 10 years of progress was more staggering than I expected. I knew we'd made a lot of progress in all parts of our mission, but that was... Um, Staggering, but what it really makes me proud is the tremendous impact that we as an organization have had on the lives of all the citizens we serve. You mentioned a, a study uh, that you had put out recently about Alabama's impact, not just as, a, as an education, educator and, and researcher, and we'll get to all those things in a moment, but also the economic impact in the state of Alabama. As I, as I look here, the, you know, the numbers are, are pretty impressive, but also the fact that UAB is the single largest contributor, the largest employer right. in the state. Um, how much does that impact your role? Uh, because you're more than just the head of a university, right? You are the largest employer right. in the state. We are, and you know we provide health care for people from every county every day. And we are now the eighth largest hospital, and we're very busy all the time. So that means we're having a tremendous impact. Last year, we saw almost 2 million patient visits, which means about 40,000 patients a week coming to our campus for care. And if you look at that economic impact, the thing that's so impressive is how much it's grown. In 20, I think it's 16. So in six years, it grew from 7 billion to 12.1 billion, which is remarkable growth. And we felt it as an institution. We know we're growing. You physically grown as well. You yes, know, the facility MedWest, I know, which is a partner, right? Uh, you know, out in Bessemer. I, I'm curious as you look at the future, is there room for more growth in terms of other facilities? We've seen such a concern about rural health care in the state of Alabama. What role, if any, do you feel that UAB can play in addressing issues there that the state has as a whole? We already are addressing those, and we've helped several of the small hospitals who were economically about to go broke or close to stay open and give them access to our supply chain, our expertise. And telehealth really, the one good thing that came out of COVID is telehealth exploded because all those patients we see at the Kirkland Clinic and on our campus, we were seeing remotely most of them and caring for the ones who were in the hospital. So that meant we had to expand our technology and we reached out and put technology throughout the state so that we can see patients, evaluate them, examine them, and care for them 250, 300 miles away. How important are partnerships? You mentioned that. I think of a situation like in Aniston, for example. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that's kind of happening in real time right now. It is. Um, why was that something that needed to be done, in your opinion, or what was the benefit to UAB in, so in an association like that? Well, we see a lot of patients from that area of Alabama. and. It's relatively near to us, but the way we partnered with other hospitals is to help them keep the patients that they can care for and send the ones that are the most sick and in serious situations that only we can care for, and that's worked well. That way we can have a positive impact all over the state, which we do. We have over 13 partner hospitals across the state from Mobile to North Alabama. In the last 10 years, there's a lot of things that have happened, but certainly, as we talked about off camera a moment ago, COVID-19 looms large right. as its impact to any university, but certainly one with such a large medical research presence. Um, what has it changed, first off, in terms of research? I know you've had, I think, $715 million in, in new research. Uh, given what we've dealt with with COVID-19, how is that changing research given this new phenomenon, relatively speaking, in medicine that's now upon us? Well, you know, we played such an important role because we've got great infectious disease doctors and microbiology and immunology and all the areas that COVID impacted. 
we already were very strong, you know, we're doing research. You know, remdesivir, which was the first treatment, we had worked on that some years before. So I think that everybody saw it is our responsibility to help the state in every way possible. So we set up drive-through drive testing sites, went into communities, we tested people from every county, and we then helped vaccinate everyone. All the college students who were coming back from being remote, we vaccinated them in that year. And that was a huge effort, but we felt that we had the expertise and that if we didn't do it, who would? So we wanted to make sure that everybody had access to the best care and to the preventive measures. On a personal level, what was that like, that period? I mean, as you saw, not only, I felt like people in the state looked to the university, right? I mean, it was not uncommon to see an infectious disease doctor on our newscast, on CNN, talking about this on a daily basis. Every day. And then you have these super sites, right? Hoover, as well as downtown, where you were having the mass vaccination. What was that period like trying to organize and also inform uh, as a university about this thing that was happening to you as well as to everyone else? It was 24-7, 365, and all hands on deck. And our leadership had daily calls to make sure we were coordinating everything we were doing, from education to testing, to vaccinations, to caring for patients. You know, we have 1,200 plus beds, and at the peak, we had 300 and something COVID positive patients in the hospital. And we had four ICUs full of very sick patients. So it took everything we could do, but it was remarkable what we were able to do for the people of Alabama. I was gonna to get to that. You mentioned the capacity, which I think, you know, Obviously, it far surpassed what was the assumed capacity here at the hospital. I mean, was there a breaking point you ever feared that you, got, you were reaching from just a pure logistics of having enough beds? Because clearly you yes. were having to improvise. Yes. We were having to prioritize our beds and our ICUs for the COVID volume. And when it passed 300 a day, it took everybody doing everything possible and people were stretched and there was a lot of emotional strain because of how sick people were and all the energy and effort that it took and the uncertainty. You know, it was a time where death was common. What was it like you know, having to deal with also, you mentioned vaccinations, you know, giving them, but there were also people who didn't want them. I know you've had issues with nurses and other healthcare facility providers who didn't want to receive those. Um, you know, what was your, what is your message looking back on that now about how you all handled that? Do you feel like you made the right decision? Well, I think we led by example. Our leaders were the very first to have the vaccination to show that number one, it was safe, but number two, it was the way to protect your life. And we wanted to lead by example. And we did that across our faculty and our students and our employees. And most all understood that we knew the science and we knew this was the way to stop this worst pandemic we've seen in a hundred years. And the reason the vaccinations were created so quickly is the federal government put billions of dollars behind it. And they told these companies to go and we're not gonna do a bunch of different, try this, try that. And the ones that worked were ready sooner. Nobody would have predicted that we could have created those vaccines so quickly, but we did, and they were safe. I want to transition here talking about one of the things I feel like, obviously, fundraising is a key part of what any president in a university does. And with you know, COVID-19, as well as fundraising, you deal with lawmakers. And I imagine uh, over 10 years, you've spent some time in my house. You've gotten to know the lawmakers there. One of the things that struck me about contrasting the beginning of when you got here to now is the amount of state funding that the university receives, or I should say, de used to receive. I think I saw 75% of your operations budget back in 2012, roughly, was from state funding. It wasn't quite that high, but it was much more significant. And when we came out of the 2008 recession for those several years, our state funding went down $100 million a year. And we fortunately were able to make that up by 
working extra hard, doing great research, growing our enrollment, and you know our hospital and our health system enterprise has always been run exceptionally well. So we were able to buffer that, but it was really difficult in those years. How do you feel about the, the you know, they the use a peer gap adjusted formula, right? The idea being that it makes sure that schools are comparable to other states funding, so it's not necessarily you know, right. an equal amount of slice right. of pie because every school is different. Uh, do you think that benefits or serves UAB's needs, or is there an alternative that you would like to see there? No, I think that we're always pleased to be measured against any peers. And we're not just measured against peers in the state. We're measured against peers across the country and around the world. You know, we're in the top 1% of all institutions funded by the NIH. And that's here in Birmingham, Alabama, in a state with 5 million people. And we rank 11th among all public universities in NIH funding and 17th in all federal R&D. And that's against you know, states that have been doing it hundreds of years. When you look at the UAB as its president, how do you want UAB to, recognize, to be recognized, not just here in Alabama, but nationwide? As a leader, and certainly we are providing a world-class 21st century education for our students. And we combine the strengths of our medical school and health system with the strengths of our universities and create unique majors that aren't present other words. Sometimes no other institution in the country, like we have an undergraduate degree in cancer biology, the first. But those are strengths of ours. So that and the world-class research that we do, you know, $715 million worth of research funding is more than all the other universities and institutions in the state of Alabama put together. You mentioned the undergraduate programs. You know, one of the things I feel like a there's a perception, you know, UAB's medical school certainly is front and center, right? I mean, it is world renowned. You mentioned the NIH funding. I'm curious, in the last 10 years, you've seen investments in things like the Hill Center, and you mentioned the new undergraduate programs. I think 18,000 at one point was the enrollment, and it has grown as well, 17% increase in enrollment. I say all that to ask, with the undergraduate portion of the university, what is the future there? Is that an area Clearly, you've put some focus on in the last decade. We have. We put focus on all parts of the university. And all of our schools, whether they're health-related or not, have grown their research portfolio. So it's the entire university. And that's how we've been able to grow by so much, 90% from 300-and-something million to 700-and-something million. And every school has grown and continues to grow. And we try to use the strengths of the complementary strengths of all of the schools to support each other and collaborate. So at UAB, we are known for innovation and collaboration. And that's what's helped us become one of the best universities in the nation and the world in just about 53 years. Anytime, I feel like with any university, when you see growth, there's a question, right, of how big do you want to be? Mm -hmm. um, you're located here at downtown, mm -hmm. and, and, and obviously making dorms and housing is, is a challenge compared to, to, other, to other campuses. I see, and so I ask, flatly, how big do you want to see enrollment here at the university become? Is there a set number, is it, or do you measure it in a different way? Well, we want to meet the needs of the students, both in Alabama and others who want to come here. And we will grow to whatever size we need to be to meet those needs. We are uh, more successful than ever in every part of our mission. And our hospital, we will continue to grow because the demand is high and only we can provide many of those specialty services. And we have tried to be very responsible. We have a very serious campus master plan that has a sustainability master plan as part of it. Over the last 10 years, we've invested $1.1 billion in our campus. And over the next five to 10, we're gonna invest about that much again. So we grow to meet the need and the demands of the people we serve. What will this campus and what will the university in your estimation look like 10 years from now? Wow, you know, there is no telling. If you look back five years ago and how much progress we made, you look back 10 years ago, it's like a different place. And we've taken down a lot of the older buildings and replaced them with newer, technologically advanced and energy efficient 
and we've greened the campus. We're one of the Tree Campus USA. We have almost 5,000 trees on our urban campus, and that's on purpose because we want it to be sustainable. We want it to be an attractive place to come to school, to come to work, and we want our patients to feel encouraged when they come on our campus that we pay attention to where we work and live every day, and we will give that same kind of attention and more to their health care. How important, how difficult is it to recruit college students given, you know, I feel like there's been a change. Students expect certain things and beyond just the education, right? There's almost a lifestyle expectation. You've mentioned the green campus. Um, and so I wonder, was there, was there a conscious effort in terms of changing how you recruit or what you offer specifically in those undergraduate students? Right. We wanted to make sure that we could provide especially our freshmen with on-campus housing and about 85 plus percent live on campus in their first year because the data show if they live on campus and they're immersed in campus life, they have a lot higher graduation rate. You know, in our athletic program, our student athletes, over the last 10 years, they've grown from graduating at about 74 percent success rate to 93 percent, 94 percent. And that's impressive. And we've done that by making sure we're investing in programs that support their success. To that end, you mentioned athletics. Uh, seeing the football team at Protective Stadium, I know it's been, you know, we're, we're coming in here now. It's, it's been a couple of years. I think this is the first time we've talked to you since that happened. Um, what was that moment like seeing the team in that stadium downtown with the UAB Blazer insignia there outside the stadium? It was exhilarating and I think made us all very proud, both of our football team and program and the young men and the people who lead that, as well as this great new asset for Birmingham, Protective Stadium. And it is really a delightful stadium, very fan friendly. So our fans and our institution, our board, our leadership have supported that from the very beginning and are proud to be part of it. I was going to say, was that an easy sell when the city and the county and all the stakeholders came together? Was, you know, was that easy for you to, 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 to convince the university's trustees about it was very easy, and that we actually catalyzed much of it. And we made a commitment that we would use that as our home stadium, and I think it was a 20 or 30 year commitment. And our board was 100% behind us. We're gonna play game, six or so games a year there, so that is an asset for Birmingham, Jefferson County, and the state for all those other you know, 359 days. So we were proud to be a part of that and to help bring that to Birmingham. But it, was the best example of public-private partnership that we've seen in Birmingham in decades. And it took everybody reaching across the table, doing their part, working together, and making that decision for the greater good. Well, I do want to go back to December 2014 uh, and that period, because when you look at it now, did you... Uh, what do you think when you look back at, at, at your decision to, to cancel the program at the time, and looking at where we're at now, what changed? You know, this was a program that you had said was not going to make money, and, and now you're part of this. You mentioned the public-private partnership. What changed in that decade? What changed is the community and our supporters stepped up like they had never stepped up before. We were raising about one to two million dollars a year. The university was putting in 16, 18, 20 million, and it had been growing, and they had a growing deficit. And when I became president, I initiated a strategic plan across the whole institution. Every unit had to have one and had to say, what's our priorities, what's success? And had to be on a sound financial basis. And when we examined it, they were not. They had been losing a million dollars more every year. And so we made the, I made the hard decision to say, we can't afford it like we're doing it now. And if we're not going to be able to afford it, it's going to take away from other parts of the mission, we may need to stop it. And that created a response that within five months, I reinstated it because there was such a response. Since then... Some might call it a backlash. Well, it was a response. And the thing about it is they had never supported it adequately before. And since that time, we've raised $71 million to support athletics, and we were raising about one or one and a half a year. 
one of the things when I read back on that time, I was not here when that happened, but I remember reading about it. There's always this allusion to the, uh, a, a disconnect between the university and the trustee system as a whole, that they were not invested or committed to seeing UAB grow. Um, you know, mentions about turf upgrades being nixed that were offered by private school, uh, private uh, entities. And now you have a public-private partnership with Protective Stadium. I guess my question is, is can fans of the athletics program be assured that the trustees of the whole system are committed to seeing UAB grow? It was my decision to stop, and it was my decision to bring it back. The reason I did is because a lot of people said, trust us, give us a chance. We will stand behind it. And these were people who we all respect. And it was very grassroots. And it was people who didn't care anything about football. And they worked together with us, and we've had tremendous success. We wouldn't be where we are if we had not gone through that period. And now we are entering the American Conference. We've won a lot of conference championships since then. Our student athletes have a GPA of 3.23 average, average. 20% have a 4.0 and they're graduating at a very high success rate. Do you find that having that football experience, and my last question on this, do you, do you find that having that of a football game day experience is important in, tour, in terms of part of your recruiting pitch, in terms of student atmosphere? It's important for the overall student body and for the campus and for the community. And so that's what's so gratifying now is we have teams that have the resources to be excellent and to strive for excellence because at UAB we focus on excellence in everything we do. The reason why is it makes the lives better and healthier of all of those we serve, our students, our employees, our patients, our community, our state. What has it been like seeing a basketball program? I know the head coach now, you have a, 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 a former, uh, someone who holds the program near and dear to their heart. Exactly. The head coach, Andy Kennedy. What has that been like seeing that come together? It's been great. You know, he is um, an alumnus like myself of UAB and proud of it. And we're proud to have him as our coach. And he leads with all the right characteristics, Fine. values, character, integrity, doing your best every day, as do our other coaches. Final question. I I've, I've run a little long here. I apologize. I, I, I guess when you look at the university as a whole, you've been here 10 years. Do you hope to be here another 10 years? How long have you thought about how long you, you want to continue in this role? And, well, and if so, what, what are some of the goals you have? Yeah, I know that I'm excited to come to work every day, and I'm really excited about all the achievements that we have. And the best is yet to come. So I'm excited. I'm planning to continue to be president as long as I'm enjoying it and being effective, and we're doing all the great things we're doing. I'm fully committed to UAB. I've been president 10 years, but I've been here for 20. And so I've invested the most important years of my career here. And that's why I'm so proud of all of our accomplishments. But no, I'm looking forward to coming to work for years to come. Is there still something you feel like needs to be done or something you would categorize as unfinished business? Is there a, a goal? that you would like to reach for the university? Well, one thing we've said recently, and I challenged our leaders to, let's grow to a billion dollars of research funding over the next five to six or seven years. And it's doable. We've grown by several hundred million in the last 10 years, and a lot of that in the last five. So we're excited about that. The reason is, it's not just about the dollars, it's about the impact. All great new therapies, and great new discoveries come through research and through study. And we are fully invested in that, and we want to cure a lot of diseases that right now are a real plague for mankind. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sure. My appreciate pleasure. It.